Hello everyone, welcome back to Football Manager 2017 and for the last time we are playing with Newcastle United. This is the end of series review, we've gone through a hundred, well, over a hundred episodes um, during this series. It's been a decade of in-game football management with Newcastle United and we've won two Premier League titles, it's time to call it a day as far as I'm concerned. Um, now this save will be going up online on Steam so if you'd like to pick up where we left off which was um, I won't save the game here which is the start of the new season I'll save it right after that game against Liverpool where we won the title for the second year in a row so you can pick it up go through pre-season yourself and see if you can win the Champions League um, but today what we're going to do is just have a look at what happened over those 10 years what were the big highlights who were the best players what trophies did we win what awards did we win and what was the general progress of the club um, and the first place to look has got to be my profile as a manager you'll see I'm not earning that much money for the man who took Newcastle from the championship to two-time Premier League victors um, I do have a fairly good reputation the skills all increased ever so slowly the 20s were all maxed out at 20 everything else is sort of built up to it um, Best opinions of me are Rafa, which is nice to see, love Rafa, uh, and Zinedine Zidane, that's not bad too. Two people that if I wanted to respect me, I would definitely put at the top of the list. Um, now you've got the career achievements, I think the better screen to go to is my history. Um, I did get that Steam notification of an award come up saying that I was now part of the furniture. We have been here for over 10 years in the hot seat of Newcastle United. Only one club, 3,659 days that I simulated through, 21 awards in that time. I've taken £34 million out of the club, not a bad amount of money over 10 years. Um, and I've been on holiday for one day, which I think I've mentioned in the past was because I was having trouble registering a squad for the Champions League. So I just got fed up and simulated through it instead of actually picking the team. Um, now in that time, we've bought 100 players and sold 104. That's almost one per episode. Um, 1.17 billion spent and we've sold 1.04 billion. So for £170 million, pounds, winning two Premier League titles is not that bad. But it does mean I spent over a billion pounds at the club. Um, Gareth Breen, the biggest signing, 66 million. And Christian Pulisic, the biggest sale at 52 million. Um, I could have broken that 52 million so many times. Even this summer, just getting to this 8th of July at the start of the 11th season, um, we've had bids come in for Imperiale of nearly 90 million pounds and another 80 million pounds for Simonson. So that's something for you to sort of keep an eye on if you do take this save forward. There is plenty of cash available if you want it. Um, I'm now ranked seven as the highest nationality, so the best uh, British manager I think that is, and then the highest in the nation, ninth as the highest English manager. That's um, pretty good going, really, to get in there with Newcastle United. Over my 546 games, we've won 345 of them. That's a win percentage of 63%, not far, or maybe even better than the likes of Sir Alex Ferguson. So over 10 years, that's a very good return on investment. Over a 1,000 goals scored in my time in charge. Over 500 conceded is not that great, but a pretty good goal difference. It's nearly 2 to 1 on the goals for us. We've won six cups, two leagues, and got promoted from the championship once. That's a pretty good record too. Um, if we have a look at the job history, we get a nice little summary of our 10 years. The first one in the championship, we finished second. Um, I won manager of the month twice, and then uh, I think those are both manager of the month awards actually. Um, and then first season of the Premier League, I didn't win anything, but we did finish 10th, which was quite nice. A pretty good result there. Uh, the year after that, we finished 7th, and I won Manager of the Year. Not bad at all. A uh, year after that, we qualified for the Champions League, finishing 4th. I won Manager of the Year again, um, and I think... Uh, I won Manager of the Month once as well. Uh, but we did also win both the EFL Cup and the FA Cup. That was not bad given that, that we finished fourth as well I'm very very happy with that that was a great season at the club the year after that we went even better we finished second I only got one manager of the month apparently in that entire season despite finishing runners up uh, we did win the FA Community Shield as well um, then we finished third we started to slip down a bit there wasn't anything to celebrate in the season 21-22 and then finishing fourth winning manager of the month twice that wasn't great but we did at least get another FA Cup to our name then we got back into the title hunt the year after that. Two Manager of the Month awards 
and an EFL Cup to go along with it before finally racking up the awards. We finished top of the league, manager of the year, five-time manager of the month, and we got that Premier League title that had been eluding us for nine years. We finally won it with Newcastle. Um, then this season, three-time manager of the month and manager of the year again. We also won the Community Shield and then finished with our second Premier League title. So I'm pretty happy with all of that. If we have a look at the competitions, um, there's a lot of getting knocked out, which I'm not too worried about. But winners, runners-up, winners, that's pretty nice. Uh, it's, it's just been an overall good time, to be honest. If we have a look at the biography, um, two league titles, six cup competitions, um, FA Community Shield twice, EFL Cup twice, FA Cup twice, and Premier League twice. It's a shame that we never won the European competitions. We finished runners-up in the Europa League and the Champions League in my time in charge. That is the only thing that was missing in this decade of management. Um, but hopefully that's something you guys can rectify when you take the club on. Uh, if we just have a look at the club specifically, we'll get this nice little progression. Uh, I came in after we finished 18th in the league. Um, one promotion, finishing second. It was a very, very difficult season. I got called into the board's office twice, or the chairman's office twice, and nearly sacked. So we did well to survive that first season. It was only intended as a beta save, so I didn't think I'd get much past two seasons. Um, but I managed to hang on to the job, finish 10th, and then that excellent progression up to the top, a little dip, and then finishing in the top two positions three years in a row. We haven't been outside of the top four for six, seven years. Um, it's It was a very good sort of race to that top four and then staying in and around the Champions League thereafter. That was the only year we didn't finish in the Champions League or didn't qualify for the Champions League, and that was because West Ham and Spurs won the two European competitions and booted us out, um, which was quite annoying. If we have a look at... Um, the best 11 of the club. This is where the real stars are. You've got the likes of Matthew Ketchell. He's now the number one goalkeeper, still at the club, still a world quality class player, the best youth player that I brought through in terms of um, staying at the club and doing well. It took him a while to become the number one. He went on loan to Bolton for a time, then to Swansea, and then we started to bring him in in place of Murray. Uh, he got a good... Murray moved on, I think, at the end of the season. We got quite a few games out of Ketchell uh, and he did become England's number one he's a very good goalkeeper Callum Chambers uh, a player I've almost forgotten about he's still playing at Southampton he's been gone for a few years now three years but he had a very good long time and consistent time at the club always finishing 7.0 uh, but he was part of the clear out as we looked to bring some young players in Mamana another stalwart of the club he's been with us since the 1920 season um 2019-2020 season, not 1920, that would make him over 100 years old. Um, but he is a very good buy, £19 million, he couldn't complain at that. Lucas still with us as well, we signed him from a Southampton I think, yep, £22 million, not bad. He was a very consistent performer, nearly up at 7.4 every season. Um, Baba Rahman, almost forgot about Baba Rahman, he was our key left back for a long time, now at Everton. Uh, we managed to turn a 13.25 uh, million pound return on him. He got seven and above every season with us, but he was part of that clear out for young players. Axel Witzel apparently is our best defensive midfielder. I'm not sure I agree with that one at all, uh, but there he is. He was barely with us. He's not even a player anymore. Uh, he retired at the age of 36 um, after going to West Brom. He left us for West Brom and then completely... Uh, just sort of fell off really. I'm not sure why they put him in the first team. That's a bit ridiculous. Lewis Cook though, he was one of the quality players we signed a long time ago. 17, 18. We got him for 15 million. Sold him for 32. He had three barren years at Chelsea where he was sent on loan to League One Cardiff. That is ridiculous. I didn't even know that had happened. Um, and then we brought him back for £21 million. He had a really poor time at League One Cardiff as well. I would have at least expected him to do well. Um, but we did bring him back, £21 million. He found his form, was a brilliant player in the last two seasons for us. Um, so he was a stalwart of this series. Kovacic, another one of those players. He's 32 years old now. will probably be cleared out of the club, but he's been with us for the same amount of time. We have just £6 million. What an investment of money that was. Um, Leroy Sane, he was our first stellar January transfer signing. We got him for just 9.25 million. He completely revitalised our team. 
got us back into the title hunt. Um, and then he started to drop off a bit. We sold him to Atletico. He's not done very well there, but we did double our money on him. Uh, Divock Origi, another brilliant player. He's currently at Man City. I don't think he's even playing at Man City, but they signed him for 46 million quid. Uh, and then he only plays 17 games. He hasn't even played in the last two seasons. Um, and in his final seasons for us, he got 20 goals and 10 assists. So it was a bit uh, unfortunate making that move. But the real hero of this entire series is Morton Simonson. He was the one who turned our entire team around. A brilliant return on goals for us. He got 24 and 26 in his first season, 41 and 50 in his second, 38 and 48 the season after that, and 29 and 41. He dropped off a bit this season, but he's been absolutely phenomenal since joining us from Napoli for just 27 million pounds. Um, other honourable mentions, Murray was quite good, Keane was quite good, Melagoni uh, still with us now, he was a very good signing a few years ago, we got him for just £15 million from Watford, I took a punt on him and he definitely paid off, uh, Vilhena, Joel Campbell was a great signing, we got him very early on in the save, he had a few years with us, just three years, but he was very good in that time, at a time we really needed him, and we doubled our money getting him off to West Ham, uh, Mangala and Mishi Batshuari was another one, of those top quality strikers alongside Divock Origi. He's currently a free agent after being at Celta Vigo. Um, but we sold him for 25 million quid after signing him for just seven and a half. We did a lot of very good transfer business. Um, and the current squad is still incredibly strong. If we just scroll over and have a look at it. Um, just players like Tom Yates Lloyd. We brought him in this season. He is a world class player and he's only 23 and he's English. Signed him for £55 million. He had a brilliant season for us. The way he turned over Bayern Munich in the Champions League this season was absolutely fantastic. Imperiale was almost forced out of the team by Yates Lloyd, but he's still a very good player. Um, and if Real Madrid are putting £80 million offers in for him, I would probably cash in, given you've got Yates Lloyd in the team. Paolo Roberto, another brilliant player, £40 million valuation on him. We spent quite a lot of money on him, £52 million. He's not played much this season, but I think if you give him full... Full first team football, he'll do very well as well. Uh, Felipe Augusto, Matthew Ketchell, Linor um, is a decent player as well. Just three-star left back. Um, Lewis Cook, still reasonably young. Gareth Green, very young. He was a very good signing as well. I think we brought him in in January. We brought Simonson in in January as well. He was our club record signing. 66 million quid. Had a very good time for us. Um, and... On the bench, Albini's young, Imperiale's young, Sabral is a top quality striker. He is going to do very, very well in the future. He got 20 goals this season from the bench. Uh, Carvalho is de decent and young. Running is still young. The other players will probably all need to be sold on except for Bob. Can't forget Bob. Um, he's not as good as we thought he'd be, but he's still getting 7.5, 7.49 average ratings in the league. So there's no reason to get rid of him. Um, but overall, a very, very good squad. If we have a look maybe at some of the information around the club, if there's anything interesting here. Um, the legends, we're not a legend yet. That's a little bit unfortunate. We are an icon. I think we're ready to just make the break into being a legend. Um, but did any of our players become leg uh, become icons? If we just have a scroll down, nobody became an icon, but we've got lots of current players in the favoured personnel. Um not much news to look out. The facilities are pretty good. 60,000 seat stadium. We did expect, uh, extend it. You could probably do that again, although the finances aren't great at the moment. Uh, we've got good junior coaching and established youth recruitment, but excellent uh, training and youth facilities. So you could probably do a few upgrades there if you wanted to. Um, if we have a look at the board, pretty secure there. Um, you've got 34 million in the budget and a couple of hundred grand in the wage budget. Uh, the club's finances are pretty poor. They were even worse earlier uh, or last season when it, they were got to minus 100 million at one point, I think. Uh, so you will have to keep an eye on that. That's because there's a lot of um, expenditure on transfer fees, if I remember right. If we look at last month and scroll to the top, player wages 10 million, but we're losing 7.5 million a month on transfers, uh, which are sort of legacy transfers that we need to pay off. Um, but that should clear up in the next two seasons because after that, uh, I don't think there's any other 48-month transfers. Um, but overall, the club's in a very good position. It's worth well over a billion pounds now, um, and it's got young players. You don't need to make many transfers to move the club on and 
uh, go on and win the Champions League. I think you could probably do it next season. I think I could probably do it next season if I really wanted to and prioritised it over the league. But it's definitely a team that can win the league every season. I'm not that great a football manager and I've done it twice in a row. Uh, so if you guys are any good, you will be able to do exactly the same. But that is going to be it for this incredible series. Um, the new series will start tomorrow. It's going to be a European journeyman um series which I've floated with you guys quite a bit. I've picked the club that I'm going to start with. You can check that out on Twitter. Uh, links in the description if you want to see which club we'll be starting out at. The goal of that series is just to kind of have fun because since getting this game the only saves that I've played are this one and Foot FM. Um, so I actually haven't really done that much with this entire game. I haven't played it at all outside of these series. So the European Journeyman Tour will be a chance for me to jump into different leagues, try different teams. Uh, it's going to be about just jumping around Europe and winning as many competitions as possible, maybe becoming the greatest of all time in management, depending on how long the series goes on for. Um, like I said, check out Twitter, links in the description if you want to see um, which team we'll be starting with. But that will be out on Saturday, so you can watch that, and hopefully you guys will show me the same support you have through this series by supporting the new one. Um, so subscribe if you want to see that new series, drop a like on the video in memory of this incredible series, but until next time, see ya!